So do you really need a Fujifilm camera to get the Fujifilm look? Let's see. So here we are, we can't get our hands on a Fuji X106, but do you really need Fujifilm? Do those creamy, beautiful film simulations really matter when you have something like Dehancer? That's what we're gonna talk about. What's up, my name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly shoot with Fujifilm and I am just as in love with the Fujifilm film simulations as everybody else is. But I've also been super curious about this company, Dehancer. They make film simulations for JPEGs, but also plugins and LUTs that you can use for your videos. And I wanted to see what it would be like as a Fujifilm shooter to start using Dehancer and get a little bit more familiar with what they do. Luckily, I had my first ever reach out from a brand and it was Dehancer. They said, hey, we've seen your channel. We like what you're doing. Would you like to review a little bit of our product? Um, like every single YouTuber tells you, this is a review. They didn't get to see it beforehand, blah, 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 blah. It's true. They don't really care about my channel enough yet to actually care what I have to say too much, but they did want me to review it. And so here we are. I have the Lightroom plugin. I also have the iOS app and I will be looking into their DaVinci program soon. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at a series of images and we're gonna look at three Fujifilm recipes and compare them against 3 Dehancer recipes and see what we like better. What I did is I took 10 images out of my Fujifilm camera, all raw images, and I processed them using three really popular Fujifilm film simulation recipes. I actually put out a quick poll on the Fujifilm film simulation thing on Facebook and asked people what their favorite recipes were. I took three of those and I used those as my basis for my comparison. I made those three recipes in the Fuji Converter app and then I converted them into JPEGs. Then what I did is I took those same raw files, I put them into Lightroom, I changed them to the Adobe color profile so that everything was even, and then I applied the lens corrections. I then went into Dehancer and I tried to emulate those similarly as I could without getting too granular to see if I could get something kind of similar and interesting for us to compare. So we're just gonna dive right in. We're gonna look at all these photos and we're gonna see some comparisons. We're gonna talk a little bit about what we think is similar, what we think is different and go from there. Now, keeping in mind, this isn't gonna be an exact replica. I wasn't trying to perfectly match. I was just trying to get the same general feel. So the first image we're looking at here is of Jesse and Shane. What we're doing here is on the left, we've got the Fujifilm recipe. On the right, we have the Dehancer recipe. Yes, I know, these don't look exactly the same. Shut up, I don't care. The point is we're trying to see if we can get something that has a similar kind of feel and I think we achieve that more or less. So if we zoom in here, a few things that we wanna note for sure is that we can see a little bit of halation that's kind of like going all the way around here. Uh, you don't really see that in the Fujifilm recipes because you don't really have a way of doing that in those. Now, important note is that I shot all of these with a diffusion filter on top of my lens. So that does change things a little bit. But, you know, when I was shooting these photos, it wasn't purely for this. And I still wanted to get the look I wanted to get. So overall, we can see that the colors are not exactly the same, but they're pretty similar. I would say that the grain is not quite the same either. Like to me, when I look at this, I think that the grain coming out of the Fujifilm is just like a little more digitized versus the grain on what we're seeing here, which just feels a little bit more natural, especially when you get into the skin. It just feels like it's a more natural kind of grain in the Dehancer, and I, I really like that. Um, I do think there's a better preservation of highlights overall in the Fuji. Like if we, that's really zoomed in. If we zoom in here a little bit, you can see for sure that we're losing some detail on the highlights. And I don't love that. And that's kind of across the board. And that, that sort of frustrated me, to be honest. And, and it's something that I think I would really have to shoot with in mind if I was using Dehancer, because I find a lot of the Dehancer recipes do seem to really burn out those highlights a little bit. Moving on to the second image here. Again, we see a little bit of that extra kind of glow here in the highlights and that sort of thing. We're losing a little bit of information. Um, overall, I think that we're seeing a little bit more warmth here, but that's more of like a stylistic thing than that is integral to Fuji versus Dehancer. The one thing I will say again, if we zoom in more, I just think that the grain is so much nicer on, on Dehancer. It's just so much more subtle and gentle, and you can really push and pull that and massage it. Like you can 
you can bring down the grain and the highlights versus the midtones versus versus the shadows and stuff like that. Moving on to the third photo here, zooming in a little bit again, we can just see obviously there's some color differences here and we could have corrected for that, but but overall, I think we are seeing a fairly similar photo here, especially when we look at the yellows and the blacks that kind of fall off here. Uh, I think these both look really nice other than that grain thing again. I think if we go into here, we do see a little more warmth and I would say like more color kind of across the board in the Fuji, which I, I like um, and a little bit different. Like if we we're really zooming in here, but if we look at the edge here along the nose, we can see that there is just a slightly different color cast when it comes to this sort of uh, chromatic aberration thing that we're seeing here. Okay, so comparing these two here, really quickly just here, overall, I think we're seeing slightly more warm hues in our photo from the Fuji film. We're seeing less overall kind of a blue color into the uh, into the jeans here, which is telling me that we just, you know, have a slightly different profile here. But I would say that these ones match pretty closely and look pretty good. I would say that the control in the highlights, again, is a little bit nicer. There's just like a little bit more information here in the highlights. Okay, so moving on here, this is where I started to see this profile I created uh, based on the Kodak Gold 200 and Dehancer. You start to see some differences here, like definitely you see a little bit more of that yellowish green in these yellows here. If you look side by side, and it's a lot more of that sort of nice magenta into here. Um, I think this is a little heavy handed and I would probably actually bring that down a little bit if it were up to me. But again, we were just trying to create pretty standard profiles here. Um, having said that, backing up like this, this looks like a film photograph to me quite a bit, I would say. So, so that's cool. I think they've definitely achieved what they were going for in that sense. This is a Kodak Tri-X 400 recipe from the Fujifilm simulation on Fuji X Weekly. And then I've compared that with a fairly similar Kodak Tri-X 400 recipe in Dehancer. Uh, I didn't really do much else. I kind of just let it sit where it did. I may have adjusted for, for our exposure a tiny bit in some cases, but I didn't mess with shadows or highlights or much there. I just kind of let it do its thing. Uh, zooming in here for sure we can see some differences we can see that there's maybe just a little more blue overall like a really subtle blue pushing into the dehancer side but i will say i think that the dehancer grain again just looks a little bit nicer to me uh, it just feels like it's it's softer overall whereas this one on the fuji just feels a little more granular again and it feels of course it's grain uh, but it just feels more digitized overall so this is the photo that I actually always intended to be in black and white. When I shot this photo, I knew I wanted to do black and white with it. It just felt like it, it worked for me. Um, if we zoom in here, we can see a, something very similar to what we saw before. Nicer grain in the black and white, but I would say that um, a more true representation of what I was hoping for, at least, out of the JPEG coming from Fuji. Um, I do think that we see some nicer fall off in some of the like highlights to darks here um, that is sort of surprising because I found that in a lot of them the highlights in the dehancer felt kind of blown out but in this recipe it feels a little bit nicer okay so this image here I really like as a black and white and I actually think both of these are achieving something really really nice which is why I wanted to bring it up um, I do actually like that there's a little bit of this sort of like cooler blue feel to the dehancer file um, and I think we've actually managed to retain a little bit more. Let's zoom in here. Yeah, so you can see, like, I just think that the grain was more gentle and it helps to retain a little bit more of the details in the jeans here, which I really like. A little bit too much of a matte look to this. I feel like the black point was raised a little bit too high in this recipe on the Fujifilm, but I feel like these deeper blacks just work a little bit better with this photo overall. Okay, so let's move on to the last one, everybody's favorite, Reggie's Portra. Let's see what things look like when we try and compare one to one. Okay, I'm genuinely a little bit scared about this one because Reggie's Portra is like everyone's favorite and I really don't wanna mess it up. <laughs> so just keep in mind, it's not gonna look exactly the same. I was just trying to find a general profile and dehancer that I thought would be similar and, and massage it a little bit to get us a little closer. Uh, so over here, we have Reggie's Portra and we are zooming in here. I think this is actually where we see a really nice balance between these two. Yes, you have a little bit more warmth and preservation in the skin tones on Reggie's Portra, but I do actually quite like that slightly more filmic look that we're getting um, on the dehancer file here because it just it softens everything up 
And I think that's kind of cool. Decent retention of highlights and everything like that. Um, we can see a little bit of like a greenish bluish kind of tinge to the sweater here and it's slightly more magenta in the Dehancer one, but, but pretty nice overall. This is Reggie's portrait on this side and you can see it just does beautiful things with the skin tones here that I don't think we were able to replicate just the base Dehancer recipe. Um, I really like how both of these look though and I think they both have a nice look to them. The uh, the one that we're seeing in Dehancer is like slightly cooler. Now if we wanted to, we could probably just jump into our develop and we could we could warm that up a little bit but uh let's see here so if we jump into our profile here and we just warm it up a little bit all of a sudden i think we brought it to life in a really nice way i think this is a great profile i think that this version of reggie's portrait from dehancer is one of my favorites which probably because i was trying to mimic reggie's portrait and that's a great that's just a great Fuji sim. Okay, so this is where we start to see a little bit of difference and, and the white balance is quite different. Now with Reggie's portrait, the white balance shifts a little bit warm. He keeps it on auto, but he just shifts things with the with the white balance shifter to get them a little bit warmer. Uh, but what we can see here for sure is that there's like a fair bit cooler of a feel to the one on, uh, on the right here. So we might wanna go back into Dehancer and just warm that up a little bit. I do hope though, overall, what we're showing here is that you can get some really, really nice looks at a Dehancer. What I wanted to do as well is kind of just make my own profile here. So what I did was I made a profile that I really like, and I basically said to myself, okay, so if I was going to make a profile for myself that is gonna be like my film simulation, what would it look like? For me, it would probably be based on a turn up because if I wanna make something that emulates film, I wanna emulate like a really nice feeling film. So I would have chosen a turn up. These are the, a couple of photos from this shoot where we we were trying to kind of emulate that eternal look using the Fuji film simulation. So this photo here and this one here, this is sort of a reference photo to show you that not everything you do from a Fuji has to look like it's film. Um, but you can make really beautiful film like photos using Fuji film. Some of our more eagle eyed viewers may have been like, Hey, Chris, what, what are you doing editing on a laptop? You said you do everything on an iPad. Well, I do this. This laptop is not actually even mine. I just I wanted to see what the Dehancer plugin would look like in Lightroom. And and so I I'm using a laptop right now, but it's not my standard thing. I normally use my iPad. And what's cool about Dehancer is they actually do have an iPad app. They have an iOS app. Uh, they sent it over to me to give it a shot. And what I think is super cool about it is it kind of takes that Lightroom iPad experience and then just lets you emulate that using Dehancer. So you can open up any photo that you might have. I've got one open up here and you can see just the original file here. This one already has a bit of a vibe to it, but what if we wanted to push that a little bit further? You can basically just go through all of their different profiles here and and see which one you'd like. So if we wanted to give this kind of like a, a brutalist kind of intense look here, uh, this reminds me so much of this one painting that we had growing up in my house by R.H. Hurley. I don't know why. It's not it's not like it, but it just reminds me of it. Anyways, so once we click on here, we can then go into the edit and we can start to change things around. This is the base thing here. So I can go in, I can say, okay, I want this to be on like a print film or I want this to be on this Kodak print film. But down here you can see like we can change literally everything about this photo. It's it's super cool. It's I'm genuinely pretty stoked about this um, because I, I think it does open up a lot of options here if we want to really try and just like shift things around and, and really see what we can do to a photo. So if we want to make this like a lot warmer, this was taken in Florida. It was like a nice warm day. If we want to really try and um, highlight that a little bit, we can do that. Um, we can boost color. We can bring it down. Uh, but as you can see, like I do think it's pretty cool to see something like this on an iPad because I think if you're creating stuff for social media, it really allows you to to just take away a little bit of what makes it hard to share on social media. Because for me, I just, I find the workflow to get stuff onto social media a pain in the ass. So I do think this could be a kind of cool way to, to mess with it. I, I want to go more in depth. And if you want to see a video that's just like the exact way to use Dehancer, let me know in the comments. Because this is sort of like a, um, 
you know, a bit of an amuse bouche. It's like a, this is like a, a taste of what Dehancer can do, but there's a lot more and I want to get into it more, but I wanted to show you kind of my first thoughts and, and this first batch of photos and really see what we could do to try and bring Fuji and Dehancer together and, and get some cool images and, and figure out a way to try and kind of bridge that gap for people who might not actually be shooting Fuji, but want to get a Fuji look. The question is, is Dehancer really worth it? And, and I can't say whether or not it's worth it for you. If you have the money and, and, and you can justify it, that's great. If you already have a Fujifilm camera and you can do all the extra studio stuff, I don't know. I mean, like, I think being able to control the grain and the bloom and halation and stuff is, is really cool. And I think this iOS app is actually like a real sweet spot. Having said that, I don't know that if I have a Fujifilm, if this is going to be the best thing for me. I think if I was to invest my money into it, I would probably look into it on the video side because I think there's just so much there. What about if you're somebody who doesn't have a Fuji? Well, I think that's where this is actually really cool. If you want to get the kind of Fuji film style look and you don't want to have to drop a grip of money on a camera or you don't want to have to buy like 40 different preset packs from your different favorite creators, you can do something like this where you can start to build your own thing. And then once you're in Dehancer, you can build your own presets that you can then apply. I think it's a cool way of going about it. And so is it worth it? I think if you have the money and you can justify it, you can get something really cool out of this, especially if you're not already shooting on Fujifilm. If you're shooting on Fujifilm and, and you have the extra cash, I, I think it's a fun thing to have. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. So that's, that's my take on it. Having said that, um, I do think I'll be using it quite a bit because it does seem like a really cool product and I'm really excited to get to know it more. So uh, food for thought. Yeah.